the layers you can break it down you can look at each layer individually see how i created it it's a it's a really good teaching process <coughs> excuse me when you when you're able to break down those uh those files like that and then for, uh, for the ten dollar a month uh tier um you'll be able to get a a, a a live stream once a month and the audience is pretty small so we'll be able to i think do some uh image reviews portfolio reviews and you'll definitely get a chance to ask questions and we'll just have a great time so and we've got we've got to do a live stream for that coming up probably in the next week so our first one will be coming up uh, next week so that covers everything and then lightbox as well yeah. so um uh yeah so um that is it i'm going to start drawing um i've been drawing a, a couple of um i started hitting uh, on some leopards and they've been really popular people like animals big cats with spots and stripes they love the tigers they love the leopards yes they do and uh and i love drawing them i love drawing leopards it's one of my favorite things to draw and i started sketching this close-up of one just real quickly Ooh. Oh, right in the kneecap. Oh, is it like right in that soft area? Right in the, no, right in the top of my kneecap. Oh, right in the like right caught the here, corner, like right in the very tip. Oh, look at that! There's our banner, creature art teacher. I love that banner, Nick. Ooh, Nick, 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 Nick. 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 I Nick, love Nick, it. Nick, Bart. I love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Cool, man. Awesome. Uh, let's get to drawing. Hi, yeah, I really like that man. <laughs> What's that? Yeah. Oh yeah, and then uh, as usual, Dustin. See, Dustin Hi. needs to be included, so I How's got Dustin. <laughs> I, I always need to be included. <laughs> I love I it. Love being here. <laughs> <laughs> so I've got Dustin. He's going to be uh, answering questions, right. um, and then we've also got Nick uh, over in Sarasota, and he's going to be fielding questions from some of our other platforms as well. And he'll so, be reading his uh, deep thoughts from those comments. deep th thoughts from. Deep thoughts. Nick Birch. Nick Birch. So here I've just very lightly sketched in a leopard, I'm characterizing it, just caricaturing it just a little bit. And it's uh and I'm trying to keep it pretty loose. And um I uh I'm doing this out of my head for those of you that are asking. I do keep a reference for spot. Uh the spots change across the body. And um, so I, I try to keep a little bit of reference for where they change. Um, but in general, uh, this is this is all in. Have you drawn a, a jaguars? No, I have never drawn a jaguar. You haven't? No. And uh, I'd like to. I'd like to. I did not expect that. No, I've never <laughs> drawn a jaguar. Huh. They're beefy, man, too. They're really cool. Oh, yeah. They're such a cool animal. The big cat in Tarzan, was that a jaguar? No, that was a leopard. Oh, that was a leopard. Jaguars are South American. Oh. Okay. Yeah, jaguar is the South American version of a leopard. But the jaguars have grown grown to be even beefier. And and uh, they're, the, they're the biggest cat in the Americas. We ever have a few uh, requests for the next drawing after this one. Uh, can you draw a deer today? A deer? A deer? A deer? No, a, a deer? Big old a deer. female deer? Uh, can you draw a gorilla today? Uh, how about a jackalope? Or how about a water buffalo eating some messy, gooey pizza? Mm. <laughs> Having him turn his ear back. Suggestion: You should do a lion, but give it a lion's fi a lion fish's mane. Oh, that's weird. That's a lion cool. fish's mane. Yeah, the big. Uh, that's like the big poison. Well, not big, yeah. big, but it's the one with the huge fins that are like super poisonous. Yeah, that would be really cool. I should do a lion fish. Oh, fin, I need to pull a up fish, but with but yeah. with like a lion's mane. Yeah. Or it could do both. A lion with a uh, um, with a lionfish's um, fins on shore, then a little lionfish 
in the water, but with the lion's mane. Looking at each other like, really? Right on, right on. Right on. All right, so I very lightly sketched in this cat, and I've, I've got him turning. You can see here, and I've got to get a little bit more kind of, because I've got him. A uh, quick one, probably already been answered, but uh, what made you choose the Bulgarian Women's Choir for Brother Bear? Uh, why not any other women's choir since the song was in, um, uh, in, I don't know how to pronounce Inuit. it. Inuit. Inuit. Uh, the Bulgarian Women's Choir have a very haunting sound to them that we really liked. And, uh, and we had a music producer, um, I can't currently remember his name, he's from the band Yes. Um, shoot, I'm forgetting his name off the top of my head right now. But he, um, he, was, he was familiar with them and he suggested it, we listened to it. We liked it, so we rolled with it. So that's why, oops, that's why we went with the Bulgarian Women's Choir. In the next drawing, how about cubs of uh, lion, tiger, and bear? <laughs> that's kind of a cool idea. Do you use reference for this drawing? No. I'm not using the reference. I have the reference. I have the... I have the image in my head. Yeah, right for home. Question, is that a Sanford Design Ebony Pencil I Spy? Those are my per personal faves. Uh, this is... Yeah, it's an ebony. They're all ground down. I don't have any new ones. Yeah. Is definitely an eb ebony. I've been watching your watercolor course. It's awesome, by the way. But uh, when do you have have to stretch the paper, and what does that mean? I just remember hearing about stretching the paper. Well, you can stretch the paper on. You can put uh, watercolor paper on stretchers, on wooden stretchers. You know, like for canvas, and you can you wet the paper first, let it swell. That's, that's what the wet paper does. It swells, and then you stretch it. You you staple it to the to the um, to the stretcher, and then as it dries, it tightens, so that it it, it, it literally tightens to into a drum, and uh, you can actually thump it like a drum. And what that does is that because the paper was already wet when you stretched it, um, when you go to paint on it and get it wet again it's only going to swell to the amount that you stretched it so it won't buckle. Now sometimes if you really soak it it'll buckle a little bit but the idea behind stretching your your watercolor paper in, uh, when it's wet is to get it so that it doesn't buckle when you wet it and pull and so that the the uh, the, um, the pigment doesn't cool a uh, pool. Cool pool whatever. Cool pool. Suggestion. I haven't seen you doing any apes or monkeys. Am I right? Would you consider doing one? Maybe a baboon would be cool. <laughs> it would be key. Yeah, I haven't done any... Um, those are all animals I need reference for because I don't have them fresh in my head. I know the basics, but I want to make sure I'm doing them accurately. But I would like to do an ape of Ooh, some okay. sort. I know I've got some ape reference. Referrals. Have you drawn a liger, and what are your thoughts on them? Um, I just don't believe, in, you know, ligers are, are really cool animals, but they never stop growing, depending on the type of, you know, there's ligers and tiglons, and ligers are the ones, I think it's a, a tiger mother and a lion father, and they, um, they never stop growing, and so... What happens is they get up to like there's one in Sarasota. Uh, it's over a thousand pounds, and uh, it's a huge animal. It's a thousand pounds, or maybe eight or nine hundred, or something like that. But either way, it's a it's a huge animal. Either way, it's heavy. Yeah, and so that really it starts creating very specific caring needs uh, that the animals have, mainly food. But also, you know, when you get that heavy, you, it, it starts putting stress on the, on the skeletal system and things like that. You know, people that have gigantism, you know, 
humans suffer all kinds of ailments from literally just being too huge. On the leopard drawing from last night, there was more uh, brush uh, like shading. What tool did you use for that? And could you go over what, uh, what you use for these drawings? I used a marker uh, for the darker areas. So this is, um, let's see here, this one right here. This is one that I did last night. I'll zoom in on it. So there's what I did last night. I just did a bunch of marker, uh, Copic marker, number four, cool, number four. I used that and then uh, I used um, this brush pen. Uh, I can't remember what it's called. It's a pilot brush pen. And I used that for the spots, to paint all the spots in. Uh, it was easier to use the brush pen than to use my regular, uh, the pen that I'm using now, this one. So I used a combination of all of these, these, these four pens right here, the Copic marker, the white gel for the rim lighting, this pen for the general drawing, this pen for the spots, okay? And this is, it's a Pilot SN-50FDF-B, and then everything else is written in Chinese. I think I got these in China. I can, uh, it's a pilot. Here it is. Oh, it's Japan. Sorry, not Jap no, not Chinese. It's Japanese. Sorry, didn't mean to be offensive. Uh, pilot. It's pilot. Yeah, that's all I can tell, tell you. And so what happens with these pens is you get, when you buy the pen, there's a little spacer right in here. And you got to pull the pen apart, take the spacer out. And when you put the pen back together, it punctures the inkwell inside. And then the ink comes down. And then there's a nice little brush. Where is it? There's a nice little brush right there on the end. You get some nice detail. And the water, the ink is waterproof. So I'll demonstrate that when I finish this, this drawing right here. But these are, uh, in case you haven't seen, these are some of the drawings I've done over the last couple of days since we last got together. Let me move this one. This one I still have a little bit to do on. I was doing this when uh, when we started. Elephants underwater, they're just cool. And this guy, this one, uh, the anatomy got, a little, got away from me a little bit. Another leopard in the tree. I love that silhouette of that. The tortoise in the hair. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, dude, you copying me? No, you copying me. <laughs> it's like two women with the same dress. <laughs> yeah. Here I was looking at Charles Dana Gibson. That was a terrible attempt at a Charles Dana Gibson. I'd say it was close. But uh, then this is just a, just drawing a face. There's a lion that got a tiger that got a little stiff on me, but it's okay. I think didn't I draw this one with with you guys? That yeah, that was the live stream. Uh, yeah, that was the live stream. Earlier in the week, and then here's the other, the the other one we did. So there's a few in here that I've done since uh, since we last got together. Actually, what I think it'd be root. I just had this idea of seeing that tiger right there. I thought it'd be really cool. Is that you know how the ligers um, and the what what was the other variation? Tigalon. Tigalon. Um, like you know how neither of them have um, manes, and their and the tiger stripes are like very faded. Yeah. So like they have. They have certain traits of each other, but not the full, yeah. full traits. Would be cool if you made your own Liger where he had like the full on lion's mane, but still had the tiger stripes. Oh like, yeah, full on like straight up tiger. And That's lions. cool. Yeah, I could I could do something like that. Nick's got a question. Well, not Nick, but YouTube question. How do you preserve your alcohol marker work from fading? You got to keep it out of the sun. Keep it out of ultraviolet light. It's still going to fade a little bit, but that's the the reason it fades is that it, it, it it's uh, exposed to ultraviolet light. What paper are you currently using? Oh, that's the other thing. This is toned gray Strathmore paper. You get them in sheets of or pads of fifty. I order about ten pads at a time because this is the only sketchbook I use. 
really. I've got piles of them, and I've got another box full over to my left. Uh, so I've, I'm never without this that this paper. How about a hippo ballet, but underwater? Oh, that's a cool idea. That's funny. Uh, saying that out loud, maybe start thinking of those um, underwater photos of the models with those like extra long skirt, uh, extra long dresses. Yeah, that'd be really cool to try to recreate. Photograph, huh? Be fun to photograph. Photograph, yeah. <laughs> I was thinking it'd be cool. Cool, she has a uh, drawing, but for a hippo. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> So I'm just just getting them started here. Hey, Aaron. Uh, I recently hey, started. How are you? Uh, <laughs> he's doing good, I think. Uh, he, I recently started uh, traditional sculpting. Uh, would you mind if I sculpted one of these? Oh, that'd be awesome. <laughs> Draw a cheetah with running shoes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, do you use any reference when you're drawing, or do they all come from your imagination? Most of them, 95% of them come from my imagination. Some of them, I'll sit down and I'll look at reference. And then some of them are my imagination, but I need reference to look at certain things. Like the spots on a leopard, making sure I'm, I'm hitting the right shape spots in the right area, because the, the spots change their shape from place to place. <laughs> Bull playing darts with pig drinking under dartboard. <laughs> That's awfully specific. That is awfully specific. Hi, Aaron. I'm going to a bird of prey falconry next week. Uh, shall I shoot my own references and then draw as I'm still in the middle of learning the anatomy, such as owls, which I'm very interested in. Yes. Definitely. Shoot your own anatomy. Or shoot your own anatomy. Shoot your own reference. <laughs> <clears throat> shoot your own reference and definitely refer back to it. I mean, that's exactly how I've learned, you know, throughout my entire life. I always shoot my own, my own reference. What is the major difference between the skull structure, structures of a lion and a leopard? Size. Grab that leopard. Oh, the leopard's right here in front of me. Go to the side camera over here. Uh, okay. So here's a lion. That's a lion skull. Look at the size of it. You can see he can eat my head off. It's a big, big cat. He can go crunchy. Here's a leopard. He can't eat my head off. <laughs> he can bite my head. But there's your there's your difference right there. You can see that size difference. There's a big... Now they're basically the same type of structure. Just one is much more gigantic than the other. And the, uh, the lion skull tends to be a little flatter. They have uh, a less of a break. If you look... In the profile, if you look at the profile, this is flatter along here, right there. And then if you look at, if you look at the profile on a leopard, you can see there's a much stronger angle break right here at the forehead. It comes down. So that's, and then here's the different. Here's a cougar which is almost almost identical to a leopard. Here's a cougar, once again, just a little smaller. But you can see they're very, very similar. And then on top of that, here's a bobcat. B bobcat, basically, once again, same structure, just smaller. Fascinating. Fascinating. 
Nick asks, are you going to keep these all animals or do you think you'll do any elves and forest creatures? I think I'm going to keep these all animals just to keep the, uh, keep the, keep it. I started with a couple of, uh, I did one elf in there and it just felt weird. So I'm just going to keep the, uh, the theme, um, animals. Just going to go with the flow. Just going to go with the flow. Go with the flow. Oh. You got any questions over there, Dustbutt? I am taking a peek. Uh, uh, maybe <laughs> How about some dinosaurs like Triceratops or Ankylosaurus? <laughs> I don't know them. But I'll just suggest a lioness playing tennis in a cute outfit. Ooh. And someone else says, uh, how about a sultan elephant or the cassowary? Cassowary? Cassowary, yeah. It's a big Australian bird. Uh, They're the ones with the big crest up on top and the purple and pink blue oh, okay. head and neck. All right. All right. We'd love to see one of the big cats that don't like water soaking wet and angry. <laughs> well, that would be lions. Lions don't like to get wet. Uh, do you have a tiger skull? I don't have a tiger skull. Ah. Uh, no, but tiger skulls and lion skulls are almost identical. I mean, to the point where you it's hard to tell them apart. <laughs> Genetically, lions and tigers are very, very close. Are the skulls that you have uh, to scale? They are. They are perfectly to scale. So wants me to do Tom Cruise impersonation. I don't think I can do Tom Cruise. He's too energetic. <laughs> yeah, help I, me help you. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't. I wouldn't know how to where to start with Tom Cruise. You complete me. <laughs> that sounds more like Heath Ledger's Joker. <laughs> a saber tooth tiger with a big toothbrush. <laughs> I thought you were doing a mountain lion until you added uh, those few spots by uh, by the eye. Yeah, well, that's the start of a few, just a few spots there. I'd like to take that suggestion further. The one that hates water. Uh, how about a cat that hates water, and first time it tiptoeing in the pond, it is in full scuba gear and swim pads. <laughs> it's crazy, man. I know, right? So I'm just getting the outline of him and some of the shading in. Apparently my uh, Tom Cruise is spot on. <laughs> <laughs> Lion trying to cool <clears throat> off in his Savannah with some ice cream. That'd be nice. Could use some ice cream right now. I like drawing swimming elephants. Have you guys ever cons uh, considered starting a singing duet? Could call it the artists. <laughs> We do want to do a, a, a travel show. Um, definitely want to do it, sort of like Anthony Bourdain, in that same vein. I'd love to do that. Um, uh, but we go to different um, endangered areas of the world, and we focus on the wildlife. But we meet the people, eat the food, but we also create art. Well, you know, and you, you see the whole, the whole process. It's something I've been wanting. It's a long goal of mine. It's something I want to do. So, uh, I'd love to do that. Do you like Ice Age? 
I loved it. Oh, you know what I watched last night? What? The Secret Life of Pets 2. Oh, yeah? Holy crap, I was laughing my butt off. It's Illumination. That movie yeah. was funny. Uh, what was the premise of the second one? I can't... It was like he gets taken to the bed? No, uh, I can't... Uh, it was... Uh, they go out to the country. There's an escaped... I came in late. There's uh, an escaped uh, tiger from the zoo and all kinds of stuff, but... Oh my god, those animals are so funny. The character designs are awesome. I, the I, animation is fantastic. The rigging, the environments were awesome. Kevin Hart just steals the show uh, for me in the first one when I was the rabbit. He does in this as well when he's on the screen. It's really amazing. It's a, it's a great movie. I felt heroic and handsome. <laughs> <laughs> YouTube question. Do you ever draw house cats? I do occasionally. Do you know the Bancroft Brothers podcast? Yes, I was uh, actually their second podcast. I was their second interview when they first started it. Which of, a, of the two do you think you have drawn more in your life, uh, bears or lions? Ooh, boy, that's a good question. Uh, I don't know. I've obviously drawn a lot of bears with doing Brother Bear, but I drew a lot of lions when I was working on The Lion King. Probably more bears. Are you messing with your camera? <laughs> I'm still paying attention. Which of the drawings you've made so far are your favorites? Top three. I'm liking the leopards. I'm enjoying doing those. Um, and I have to, I'd have to go back through, but I'm liking the, uh, the, um, the elephant drawings in general. Uh, how about a podcast with different artists, animators, or etc.? Yeah, we've talked about, oh, you know, there's another one we talked about, because, uh, I love to cook. So Nick and I want to do one where we have a it's an art and cooking show. Ooh, kind of like one person cooks if all the other person does art, or yeah, we just talk. Person. Yeah, we we just talk about cooking. Yeah, sort of like live from Daryl's house. If you ever watch that show on, uh, I can't remember what the the music channel is. It's not MTV. It's uh, Palladium. Palladium. I cannot recall. But um, it's Daryl Hall from Daryl Hall and John Oates and. He gets together with he invites other artists to come in and play music, and they they play music, and you watch that, and then they talk about food, and they go and eat. It's, it's awesome. <laughs> it's an awesome show. What situation causes you to include Copic markers instead of using a white jelly roll and a black pen? Um, if I want a, a, a half tone, a dark, a, a, gr a dark, a gray that's not black, but darker than the paper. That's why, like, if I if I use the number three pens, um, Copic markers, they're the paper is darker than the pen, so it's no good. So I use like a number four, or number five, and then I go to a black pen. So I, I've got like four values. I've got the the value. I've got white. Then I've got the value of the paper, then I've got the value of the marker, then I've got black. You heard of the Amazon fire? Maybe you could draw like a Jaguar it's black more than that. It's not just an Amazon fire, it's yeah. Amazon fires. There's yeah. Since uh, the beginning of the year, there's been 74,000 fires in the Amazon. Jeez. Sorry, I cut you off. What were you going to say? But um, say so maybe you could draw a Jaguar, Black Panther. And anacondas, uh, they may not be along with us. Well, the the, the Amazon isn't going to burn down, so don't worry about that. But it's going to be, uh, it needs help for sure. That's a place where Nick and I definitely want to get to and maybe do a podcast, not podcast, but a live stream, uh, do some streaming from there. When you watch a new animated movie now, do you do it uh, for yourself or the kids? 
you know when you buy a train set for Christmas, it's actually for you, not the kids kind of scenario? Yeah, animated movies are for me. <laughs> I mean, my kids and I will, will watch them together. Oh, yeah. But, I, uh, yeah. I, I really love The Secret Life of Dogs or Pets. <laughs> I thought it was hilarious. YouTube question. Hey, Aaron, what about the Tuesday suggestion of meerkats tossing rings on a rhino horn? I love that idea. I gotta get some. Uh, I gotta get some reference of both. Have you guys heard of the lion whisperer Kevin Richardson? Yes. If so, how about a cat called the Human Whisperer, and being uh, greeted cheerful by human wildlife in a preserve? <laughs> no humans. No humans. I only drew a few, but I want to. I'm going to stick with the cats. So it's just as a the cooking art teacher for the podcast. Yeah. Uh, how much will each of these uh, drawings at Lightbox be? Uh, can you do one with a whale? Maybe a whale wedding. <laughs> That's awfully specific. They're one hundred dollars a piece. go. Hi Aaron Dustin, have you heard of the How to Train Your Dragon films? Who knew Vikings and Dragons would work so well together? Yes, we very much know those movies. I know the directors very well. They're excellent. Some of the best written films, and I love the, the fact that they did them as a trilogy. Do you know any good artists that stated drawing that started drawing later in life? I don't know. I mean, I know a lot of people that started later in life that draw well. Um, I don't know of any famous artists that started drawing later in life, or maybe I do know them, but I just don't know their history. Aaron, you usually are asked, "What's your favorite animated film?" Is uh on your st streams, but what is your least favorite animated film and why? Oh. Um. Well, uh, I hate slamming other movies. I don't like to do that. But I really didn't like Black Cauldron. <laughs> Black Cauldron, if I try to watch it, it's like... It's like putting bamboo shoots under my fingernails. I just can't... I can't do it. Has anyone told the three of you that you're awesome lately? Thank no, you. Go for it. So slowly getting the the spots in here, and like I said, I'm always trying to make sure that I'm putting the right type of spot in the right area. Their size varies. A lot of different. There's a lot of different uh, variations in the spots on you know spotted cats from depending on where where it falls on the body so one could buy all of these drawings at the event for ten thousand dollars correct <laughs> if you want to give me ten grand for all the drawings they're yours can you imagine just a guy walking up with a suitcase of ten thousand dollars here's ten thousand dollars give me all your drawings <laughs> well <laughs> I've sold paintings for $10,000, so stranger things will happen. Well, that's a single painting talking about, like, a whole stack of drawings. <laughs> yeah. Would you like new names for artists to follow? Uh, say that again? Would you like new names for artists to follow? But I like new names for artists to follow. I don't know what that means. Maybe like a new business name or maybe a new artist to bring on board that that people might know. Or I don't know what yeah, I don't know. Uh Cool Cat. Aaron, how are you liking the brush pen? Oh I love brush pen. I love brush pens. Especially for doing things like this. You know, these spots. It works out perfect. 
absolutely perfect. Perfect. Is there a reason you don't use the gray shade before the spots? The the Copic? Yeah. Uh, no. I just I'll I'll put the uh, I'll still put the Copic on there. Uh, it just goes on. It goes on after. It, the the marker the uh, brush pen doesn't doesn't bleed. So it's still part of my drawing process. Nick Hazel says, uh, just join your Patreon because you're awesome. Hey, thanks, man. I appreciate that. Sorry I joined at a lower tier as I want to keep money for courses and saving for membership, etc. But still. I love it. Thank you. The other great thing about the spots is depending on how you orient them, you can get it really to feel like the form is turning. You know, you got to think about how those spots are sitting on the form. Have you ever seen The Last Unicorn? I think I have. There's the one that um, uh, Jeff Bridges. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Was the uh, voice yeah. of the prince and um, what's his name? He was um, Saruman and uh, Count Dooku in those movies. Uh, He's the king in uh, in Last Unicorn. See, here is where the sparks, the spots start to stop being spots. Right about in this area, right about in the shoulder blades, they start to become what they call rosettes. <coughs> they start to break up. Is this satisfying to do, Aaron? Uh, if it wasn't, I definitely wouldn't be doing it. That's true. Uh, will you sell the prints all original, or will there be printed copies in uh, Lightbox Expo? Um, we might be doing a book with these called 100 Drawings. But when it comes to selling them individually, are you just going to be selling the originals? Yeah, or? we don't really have any prints of these, no. Do you guys own any animal encyclopedias as I would like to design my own creatures in the future? Yeah. Or are they saying, do we recommend any or do we own them? I think you're asking if we own any animal encyclopedias. Yeah. We've got a whole bunch of them. Yeah, but we haven't um, published any of our own or your own. But oh, if that's what they're asking, no. I think that's what they're asking. Um, if that's not the question, then uh, do, you, do you know any um, animal encyclopedias uh, you could recommend? Uh, uh, just, just so we can feel full. No, not off the top of my head. I don't, and I don't have. They're the ones I have are in storage. Gotcha. But there's a ton of animal books out there. There's just so many. Dustin has to scan all these drawings. <laughs> no, I'm, scan I'm scanning them as I go. Thank you. So, so far they're all scanned. <laughs> Why don't you like Disney songs? <laughs> That's so funny. That was from the last live stream someone remembers. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's, it's just a little too... Uh, I, I don't. It's not that I don't like all of them. I'm just, I'm kind of over the Broadway stuff that we did in the 90s. You gotta remember it's that's what we did on every movie. I always wanted to do something a little different. Don't get me wrong, I like the I you know I think it's I think it's good music. I just I just get uh I get bored with it. Dustin, what do you use to scan the drawings? DPI? Um, I use a scanner to scan the... DPI meaning dots per <laughs> inch. Yeah. Um, I think it, the, for the drawings we... We uh, 300? I yeah, think. I think it was at like 300 or even higher than that. I think it was like 300, 600. Yeah. I think it was at 300 at, at least. 
Well, it might be 600, actually. I think you're right. I think Nick wanted you to do it at 600. Yeah. Be for in case we wanted to blow them up real, real big on the pages. Yeah. So you can see these turn into these interesting shapes that are caused by several spots coming together. And these are called the rosettes and then within inside each rosette it gets a little bit darker. Just a little bit darker. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Just a little Actually bit. I'm looking at this, I put the eye up too high, the eye should have been down around, around here. Anyway, well, live and learn. It's too late now. Don't forget to save your work. <laughs> that joke never gets old. No, it doesn't. So I'm getting pretty excited about Lightbox. We're going to have a good time. We're going to have to meet up with some good friends. My friend Peter Hahn is going to be there. We're going to have dinner together along with seeing Bobby and David Coleman who's another great animal artist if you don't know David Coleman look it up David's great amazing story artist as well he's working in live action right now in Atlanta on some cool projects but really good animal artist DC oh sorry I didn't mean that's right Bobby Chu of course then all my friends that I usually see when I go into Los Angeles, Alex Cooper Schmidt, Walter Yoder. If you're listening, Walter, we're coming. <laughs> we're coming for you. Can you live stream at Lightbox for those uh, of us that can't go? That's actually a good idea. We might do that. So here you can see those shapes coming together. You can see how they change as the as you move from the head down through the through the neck and into the body. Question uh, from YouTube. Any tips for dealing with the pelvis? Doesn't matter what animal, I always struggle with hind legs. I have a hard time finding good animal pelvis references to study. Yes, let me show you something really quick that might help you. Let, let me show you something. Let me show you something. We're going to do this traditional. I'm going to move this drawing out of the way. I'm going to grab a scrap. Here's a scrap. I'll turn that over. Now think of an animal pelvis. We have, we as humans, we look at from, a, a, from behind. We have a rib cage that comes around. Here's our back. Comes down like this. Like that. And then we have hips come down and then our legs go in underneath there and there's basically a bowl right here right here these these hips make a bowl and that's what because we walk upright uh, our guts kind of sit in that bowl let me zoom in a little bit on that and then our our legs are in here like so okay so on an animal Think of it, think of it, um, let's draw an, uh, let me come over here. Let's draw a cat, for example. So here's the shoulder blades. We're looking at it from behind. The head, here's the neck, the head, the ears, like that. So we're going to come back. Here's the body coming down. Here's the arm and the feet. Like so. Okay. Oh, let me... Let me go a little wider. So when you have a pelvis, think of this area. Let's simplify it. Just think of this area right here where the pelvis is as a plane. Okay? And right at the top of that plane is going to be your hip, which is what this is on us, the hip. That's not where the, that's not where the leg socket is for the femur. That's just the hip. And that's what people forget. So you're going to have a, a, a bump there. And a bump here, usually, well, maybe down a little lower. And usually it gets kind of thin, you know, in here. Okay? And then from there, it comes down. Now you're going to have the butt. Over the butt is the tail. The tail sits up on top, like so. Comes down. 
like so. Now, you've got muscle that comes down this way and this way, and you've got a knee right here. Now the femur connects right about in here. And then you've got a knee, it comes back, and they, the uh, ankles usually come together, like so. And you're gonna have a calf muscle. We have, you know, just like we have on, our, on the backs of our legs, we have a calf muscle kind of shaped in that, like this. This comes back. And then here's the, the heel, the ankle. Just gonna draw this straight down. And then the foot. Okay, so now you can see that femur connects here. So if we, and then, then you got an ankle right here. And you can see how the see how the ankles kind of come together. I'm drawing through through the tail, but there's a nice simple straight line coming down right here with muscle, boop, muscle there, and because of the Achilles tendon, you got a nice hollow that goes up through there, and then you know you got the back of the the back of the foot, the back of the heel back here so there's your that's your the this looks more like a dog <laughs> than a cat but it's basically it's still the same okay so there and then we'll bring the other foot in here they kind of stand with their feet sticking out like so okay there's that now let's do it from the side So here's the back, and then there's that pelvis right there. And that pelvis can move, you know, it can move up and down according to, you know, depending on the orientation of the body. But there's that hip that I was talking about. There's that plane. We're looking at this plane right here, but just from the side now. And remember that the, the femur connects right about there. So you have muscle that comes off the hip. But then that femur sits under the muscle. There's muscle that comes in here, and muscle that comes in off the back, back right here. That connects down to a knee, which comes back this way. And, and when I'm drawing from the, uh, a leg in profile, I like to keep this line and this line parallel. So you look at that line, look at that line. I like to keep them parallel. So we come down here. There's that leg. You've got a, a calf muscle. You've got the, the, the ankle under the foot. That tail sits up on top like so. And this tend, like I said, this tends to be a little hollow in here, a little thinner. And it comes down like that. All right, so there's a quick lesson on the pelvis and how it sits, if you just think of it as a plane that muscle attaches to on the hips, then it's a little easier to, to think about it. There you go. Elvis the pelvis. Elvis the pelvis. My hands are getting a little dark. I might need to change that. I might need to go and wash my hands. Uh-oh. Again. Uh, would you be willing to draw a uh draw horses for light box or are you purposely drawing only wild animals like lions and elephants no I, I've got I've got a horse in there I could do some more horses oh. uh, do you have any brush pen recommendations the bemoji pens I think are really great and the pen I'm using right now this pilot awesome Bimoji, B-I-M-O-G-I, and get the medium bristle synthetic. Bimoji. Jimmy Nicholson says, for a few months, I have been uh, examining your... Elvis the pelvis. Go ahead, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I have been examining your pen and ink drawings and watching your live streams. 
not only have your drawings inspired me to try such drawings, but your live streams have helped me improve my drawings. Thank you so much for your efforts. Oh, thank you. I'm glad that we've been able to help. Do you have advice on drawing animal with open mouths? Yes, I've got, I've got advice on that too. I'll show you a common mistake on that. Once again, let's move that. <laughs> common mistake on what? Uh, animals with open mouths. So here is uh, our, that's our femur lesson. Let's go to, what's this one? Another garbage lesson or garbage sketch. So let's say we have a, a cat. Meow. Okay. So here's a cat. Like so. Oh, let me zoom in a little bit. Zoom in on in. Okay, we're gonna come up, we've got an ear. So, now what's happening underneath that skin? Okay, that's what we want to know. So what's happening under the skin? Well, we've got, we know we've got a jaw, okay, and that jaw, we draw through, comes back here, connects. Here's the cheekbone coming along here. There's the front of the cheekbone under the eye. And then the, the cheekbone itself, all the jaw muscle, goes underneath that cheekbone. It goes right about this line. There's a whole bunch of muscle up in here that attaches to that crest on the skull. You've got a whole bunch of muscle right here underneath that bone. And that muscle is there to contract and really bite hard. Now the hinge for this jaw is way, you know, it's, it's back here. That's where the hinge is, okay? Now there's a lot of people that would come along and the first mistake they make is they draw this cat with a mouth that's open like this. That puts the hinge right about there. That's not how the jaw opens. You gotta remember that jaw hinges back here. So it's going to open, see if you can see this, okay, so it's going to open there's our nose. See how that skin stretches and we're going to hinge that jaw back here. So you get all the stretch here. And that brings our hinge up to there. Okay? Not here. Don't open the mouth like this. That's how some that's how a lot of people open the mouth. That's not how it opens. It opens back here. That's with any animal, like a horse. Horses people tend to get me mess messed up because a horse has such a long So we've got a horse okay so here's a horse's head like so there's the mouth right there okay here's neck like that okay so when you open that mouth once again, it doesn't just or like like that. It doesn't open right there. It's got to open back here, right there. So when you draw a horse, this is how they end up looking when you open up a horse's mouth all the way. Notice how these lines right here become parallel because that jaw is opening back here. Here's the jaw right here. 
closed, the teeth come together, but when those that mouth opens, They become parallel. And actually, you get a bit of a hollow in here. But you got to remember that hinge is back there. Like that. There's a horse going. <laughs> okay, so make sure that's the biggest thing with open mouths on animals. Make sure you remember where that jaw is hinged at. Just like so. There you go. Lesson number two. There back to go. our back to our regularly scheduled program. <laughs> Lynn asks on YouTube, are you familiar with Ken Holt, Holt, Holtgren's Art of Animal Drawing? My mom just gave me her copy from 1950. It said he was a Disney artist. Yes, I have a copy of it in a binder somewhere in my storage. It's awesome. It's very cool because it deals with a lot of action movement as well. Gabby just got on. Gabster. <laughs> just went, God, it's 11 a.m. and I just woke up. Morning, guys. <laughs> yeah. Grace says, ooh, noise circle. <laughs> noise circle. <laughs> it's a noise circle, dear bud. Hey, bud. Hey, dear bud. Does anybody out there watch Lenny K Letter Kenny? <laughs> <laughs> Waiting for season seven the other day. <laughs> See, it starts going back to just regular spots now. Gradually. Matt Yoakum says, Dustin, thanks for being so entertaining and funny. And Aaron, thanks for the live streams and courses. They give me confidence. Yay! You're so welcome, Matt. I'm glad to I'm glad that I'm making you laugh. <laughs> there we go. Getting some nice as we get further down the arm, they get closer together and bigger. This is for our latecomer. Uh, hi, I was wondering what type of paper you're using. Also, do you have any tips to avoid paper from warping when using a gouache or watercolor? Well, you got to tape down. A lot of times, if you don't want it to warp, you've got to stretch it. And we were talking about stretching earlier. You, what you do is you get, first of all, use a, pa a paper that's good for water media, wet media, like watercolor paper, something like that. And you soak the paper, you get it nice and wet. And then you take it out, let it drip a little bit, and then you put it on a stretcher. I like to put it on regular canvas stretchers, you know, wooden canvas stretchers, uh, because the paper can dry from both sides. Or you can just put it on a, you know, a, a, just a, a, a desk and tape it down. But you want to tape it down really, really good. Otherwise, when it dries, it's going to pull up because it's going to shrink when it dries. And the idea is, when you stretch it, is that when it's wet and you tape it down, it's already swollen to as big as it's going to get when it's wet. So when you wet it again after it's dried uh, to paint on it, it won't warp because it can't get any bigger than, than the way it was when you uh, taped it down. Or you, or when you use the stretchers, I was just talking about the canvas stretchers. You staple the paper. That to me is the best way because it really can't pull up if it's stapled. And then when you're done, you just cut it out of the out of the uh, stretcher. I'm working on a, a, a design for design of a critter with a deer skull for a head. Uh, I'm struggling to draw it from the back for this reference. Uh, any tips? Um. Well, just think about that understructure. Where does that? Where does the? Where does the vertebrae connect? That's that's where a lot of people run into problems when they're drawing something from behind. Think about where that vertebrae connects, and then build the muscle on top of that. 
Are you going to be at White Box for all three days? Yes, I will be there all three days. I will be lecturing all three days. And um, I'll either be at my booth or I'll be lecturing, one or the other. And uh, so uh, hopefully I will see you there. That is like totally awesome, dude. Yeah. Yeah, bro. Uh, So now, I'm just hitting a few other areas in here. I'm going to hit it with some maca. Uh, would you do uh, cloud paintings in the future? Oh yeah, I like do I love doing those cloud paintings. I haven't done them in a while. We actually developed an entire uh, movie approach based on the the. Uh, cloud paintings. Drew Nicholson says, uh, Aaron, I had a laugh when you mentioned being an, being an old 51 year, years old. Ha! I have socks older than you. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it's Good. safe to say that he is older. <laughs> All right, so I've got a little bit more drawing and shading in here. Now what I want to do is I want to get in there with my maca, right here. And I've already filled it up. I've refilled it. I might need to refill it again, but I've refilled it right here with my ink. And um, I'm just going to go in with the brush pen and start hitting some areas. When watching your course material, I miss Dustin and yours banters, so I feel feel like I have to uh, fill in for for him with uh, these live streams. Oh yeah. <laughs> Chelsea Henry says hi, Dustin and Aaron. How's your day going so far? Well, I'm drawing animals. Can't get much better than that. Yeah, I just got a new camera today too. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You mentioned uh, doing a book on these 100 drawings. Uh, is there an art of Aaron Blaze book in uh, in print on the market? There is not. So it's, we, that's why we want to do it. We want to get something out there. Let's do it. It says Copix. You're so modern, Aaron. Swinging with the hipsters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just like your brother. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's like, is the new camera the one? Well, it's the next level to the one. But it's definitely a major upgrade compared to what I, what I was working with. Would you agree with that? Yeah. <laughs> so I'm just coming in and hitting where the fur is darker or orange. And notice, I can go right over the spots that I laid in there, and it doesn't uh, it doesn't bleed. That's the key. You want to make sure that whatever uh, brush pen you get, it's waterproof when it dries. Hi Aaron, I'm doing a Halloween um, ink drawing for Inktober, but I want to add orange marker uh, to it. Does that count as long as the rest of the drawing was in ink? <laughs> yes, I don't think there's really any hard fast rules unless, you know, other than it has to be in ink. So I think you're okay. And I think as long as there's like some like, as long as you're making, like, ink lines and filling in with the marker or something, that's fine. I mean, if it's all pencil, then 
it kind of ruins the point. So, so as long as there's ink, there's ink lines in here. Spoken from the guy who's never even participated in Inktober. I know the rules, though. I see all your stuff every year. That's true. Are you going to upload random pics from the new camera from like quality purposes? Yes, I will in the future. Um, Copic oh. is ink too, right? Nick says we will be posting your light box. Or my light box. Uh, I don't know what that means. Well, we're going to be posting from light box, I guess, is what he's saying. Nick says Rivers just saw your Merwell print and said, wow! <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. For um, those of you that know my that big mer whale that I did where it's an orca as a mermaid, um, we're selling that as a print at um, at Lightbox. Uh, Copic is a type of ink too, right? Yeah, it's alcohol based uh, ink. Pigment, I guess. It dries very fast. Alcohol evaporates really quickly. Gotcha. The ink that you're using for for your pens for your tool. Yeah. Uh, that's a gel base. Oh, for these. Yeah, the ones that you're using. These are gels. This is, but this is Copic. This is that's alcohol that, base. That there's Copic. Gotcha. Yeah. But th and so that's technically ink as well. Yeah, I mean, it's marker ink. Pigment, whatever. I go through a lot of these markers, so I keep bottles of these inks around at all times. So Inktober can be in all the colors of all the inks. <laughs> yeah, I don't see why not. I mean, personally, I don't see why not. Mark Davies says, hey, Aaron, need to say a big thanks. I've been an animator director uh, for 15 years. My practice was becoming stale. I've been taking your lessons for two years, and the change, change has been phenomenal. That makes me happy, Mark Davies. Have you done much in colored pencil? Do I know Mark Davies? Huh? I think I know Mark Davies. Mark Davies, that Do doesn't mean Do I know Mark well. Davies? Mark Davies. Of course I know Mark Davies. That name ring, rings a bell. I what was the question? Um, have you done much in colored pencil? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, sure. Oh yeah, sure. Oh, yeah, sure, why not? That was my last colored pencil. I just, I did that a few weeks ago. So, yeah. I, that used to be the only medium I did. I, I stopped doing watercolor for a long time when I was a kid in school. And I just did colored pencil. And I hadn't done colored pencil in a long time, and Vedanta has just had just gotten a bunch of new colored pencils, and so I decided to sit down one Sunday afternoon and pull them out. I hadn't used them in about 20 years, but it was fun. So yeah, that was my last colored pencil drawing I did. I tried to um, I try to use a whole bunch of different mediums. I always, I like switching it up. Because it um, it keeps me fresh, exciting. No, but it keeps me uh, it keeps me fresh. You know, fresh. Yeah, I think it'd be a really fun challenge. Is like you mentioned about the color pencils and all that jazz. I think it'd be interesting if um, to show students in high school and everything that you can use basically any. Um, form of pencil or anything to make art, like using uh, specifically school supply color pencils. Well, I did one stuff. the one day where it was just cray Crayola crayons and coffee. That's awesome. Yeah, I did it with coffee and Crayola crayons, and it came out kind of cool. Was that last year? No, I did that when I lived on the beach. 
Oh, that's right. Oh, Nick says we'll be posting my light our light box schedule online. Oh, there you go. Sorry, I didn't see the rest of that, Nick. Uh, Heron, I can't go out and watch bears, but I know you always stay to draw from life. Is it good? Is it a good idea to watch videos and live streams of bears instead of looking at photo reference? Yes. Matter of fact, um, I really recommend. Uh, there's a live stream. Uh, what what time of the year is it right now? I think the I think the salmon run is still going on. Um, they have a live stream of the bears in Alaska at Brooks Falls, um, catching salmon. And uh, I like to tune into that every once in a while and draw right from it. It's it's live. It's always, it's, in my opinion, it's always better um, drawing animals, at least from video, uh, rather than photographs because you're seeing those animals in three dimensions. And I, I know it's a two-dimensional medium when you're looking at video, but as you see them move around, you get a sense of their form, and that's what I'm talking about. With a, with a single photograph, you really are stuck with that one image, and the photograph can lie. It'll tell you the shape of something that's really not there. And so you got to be careful about that. So for that colored uh, uh, drawing they just showed, the lion, how much would you be willing to sell that for? <laughs> it's not for sale right now. Uh, those are the, That would be a few hundred dollars, probably three hundred dollars. That looks like a pastel pencil. Is it pastel or wax-based pencil? No, it was wax-based. It was Prismacolor. What kind of new Disney princess do you want from Disney? Uh, what do you want the next Disney princess to be like? I don't know. animal was the most difficult for you to learn to draw? Um, cats have always been, you know, every animal is diff difficult in its own way. And um, cats, for some reason, just to getting the nuances of cats, I've always kind of uh, struggled with it. And it's just in the last few years that I've actually gotten a, a, a good handle on it. Oh yeah, explore.org live stream. It, that's the current bear, uh, current live bear stream. Uh, Nick says, how about some Disney princes? Oh, yeah. Ooh. So there are some bears at the, uh, if you go to explore.org, there are some bears there currently. So here's our leopard for the day. For the day. For the day. So I'm going to put a little bit of white behind him. Just down a leopard low. Dear Just to get him to pop a little bit there. Just going to make him pop right there, bud? Yes, yeah, sir. Sure. So there's our leopard. You're gonna mess with the leopard, you're gonna mess with me, and I, I suggest you let that sit there and marinate. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, so it's, so it's Princess Destina and the Florida alligators. Yes! Let's get some gators in here. So we're making succotash as a side dish tonight. I, uh, I had succotash as a side dish today for lunch, and it was made so well, I decided we're going to make it. Vedanta and I love to cook together, so we're going to make succotash and baked chicken for dinner tonight. Austin and Dustin are coming over for dinner. What is a succotash? Succotash, it's like corn and onions and... Uh, uh, Soybeans or lima beans, usually okra, but we're not going to put any okra in it. Okra is a little too slimy for me. And uh, diced tomatoes, and it's all sautéed together, and, uh, and a little bit of bacon, and some butter. Ooh. Yeah, doesn't that sound yummy? Yummy. Do you like the Madagascar movies? I love them. I love them. 
I love uh, Sasha Baron Cohen's character. Is that the uh, the hippo? No, the lemur. Oh, oh the lemur. <laughs> There. Bum bum bum. Another leopard. Da da dun dun dun. <laughs> Dang, I just dun, barely dun, got dun, here and I'm already impressed. How are you uh are you doing another drawing? Yes. Absolutely. What time is it? It is two twenty two. Yeah, we got time for another one. Yeah. Disney should make a uh Disney princess native to Egypt. Well, that's a good idea. Maybe a long lost pharaoh. That's a good idea. That'd be a good idea. Suffer, suck it, All right, so there is our a new drawing. Just a little leopard profile with a little lesson on the spots there. There you go. That makes drawing number forty-two. Can we, we hear got, about? Oh, sorry. We've got a lot of drawings here, and you got the long way more to go. Oh, there's a horse. I saw that horse go by. <laughs> Whew. All right, next question: Is Faber Castell good enough to get this level of detail? I always see people using Prismacolor, so I wonder if they're inferior. Um, I think Prismacolor are better. Can we hear how you and Vedanta met? We met, uh, we met at a strip club in uh, Tijuana. <laughs> nothing? Nothing? You didn't hear my answer, did you? No. no. Oh. <laughs> you weren't listening? No, I was, I was reading a certain question. <laughs> I said we met at a strip club in Tijuana. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sounds accurate. <laughs> no, actually, we met on Facebook. Uh, Vedanta is Nick's sister-in-law. Vedanta is Nick's wife's sister. And we kind of met indirectly, and she liked one of my posts, and I liked her post. Facebook page and um, then we discovered that she was Nick's sister-in-law and we went oh, what are the chances and then we started talking and then we met she was living in Virginia I flew up to Virginia and the rest is history all right uh, let's do uh, oh yeah we wanted to do a rhino Oh, this is going to take a little bit. Well, from earlier, uh, talking about the food, someone says, Wait, Secatash is a food? I thought it was just a thing Def, uh, Daffy Duck says. No, that would be, uh, that would be, uh, Sylvester the Cat. I, was, I thought it was a suffering Succotash. Yeah, suffering Succotash. I thought that was a. Uh, we didn't know that was a food. I thought that was just something that he said. Oh no. I gotta pull up some. Uh, I'm trying to draw a meerkat from my head and I can't remember. What is it? Meerkat? Yeah, I might have to look it up on my telephono. How do you spell it? Meerkat. M E E R K A T. Oh, Timon, basically. Yes, yeah, Timon, exactly. Mirka. Do you want a side profile? Or yeah. See, they off? stand straight up on their on their on their. They use their tail as a tripod. That's what I was wondering. I didn't know if they stood on their on their oh. heels, which they kind of do. All right, I got to get some good gestures in here. I want one coming forward. It's coming forward. It's just thrown. Got one foot down here. Tail's coming back. 
There's his little shoulder blades. There you can see it that way. There's his little shoulder blades in there. This one's coming there back. There you go. Bottom right. Oh, thanks. Perfect. Now get a, uh, uh, a black rhino for me. Black rhino. Let's get this arm coming back. There we go. And those little ears are off to the side. That's what I couldn't remember. Where are their ears? You need a full-on sideways shot by profile or front? Front. Doesn't matter. Uh, three quarter. Three quarter. Go ahead. Let's let's throw that ring right up there. <coughs> That tail right down there. I'm gonna get him up on a little hill, like on a termite mound, the way they like to stand up on termite mounds. Question: I'm thinking about buying paper, which is good for both inking and graphite drawing. What kind would you recommend? Uh, anything, anything cold press. I'm not. I'm sorry, not cold press. Anything hot press. Like if you want to get a heavier duty paper, get it hot press. That's smooth. Here's that pelvis. Remember, I'm thinking about that pelvis. I always think about it looks like a little, a little uh, pocket in his uh, in his pajamas. There's that hip. How's that? Is that's that good. Just, is that too small or? Yep, that's good. All right, that's a good. That's good. That's very good. So their little heads are wider than they are tall. So I'm going to put his and. Uh, they're pretty straight right in the back. You can use my straights against curves. So you just go right down the body here and their shoulders. I'm going to get him. Oh, he's getting all excited. See what I did? I gave the little guy two elbows. Here's a little shoulder. Whenever you guys say rhino, all I can think of is uh, the ants from uh, James and the Giant Peach. I remember that rhino. It was so the, there's um, a... Sorry, hold on. There's a little thing there. Little side ears. like that. That's, that one feels good. See what's nice? It, the, the, the way that they're built, it gives you an opportunity to do nice and simple. Right there. Against. Complex. It's one of the design uh, things I always talk about, which is thinking about, you know, your... Or get that pelvis going the other way. You know, you have simplicity or straights against curves but you have simplicity against complex and that's what I'm doing right here and it makes for a more interesting drawing and you can do that somebody does know Leonard Kenny in here so we're a pitter patter let's get at her <laughs> <laughs> which basically means hurry, hurry it up <laughs> or spill it out um, are they throwing something yeah he's throwing a little ring right here Ah, I'm going to throw rings on the uh, rhino's uh, yeah, board. Yeah, remember? Oh, yeah. Are you all right? <laughs> yeah, I'm fine. You remember, that that was the whole suggestion, right? My little buddy? Yeah. I'm trying to remember who it was that recommended it. There we go. There we go. Do you have any uh, art of books? And if so, which one's your favorite? Of other artists? Yes. Oh, uh, I've got a lot of, uh, Bate, Bar Robert Bateman is one of my favorite wildlife artists, and I've got quite a bit of stuff from him. And, 
Thomas Aquinas Daly, who's a watercolor artist. He's one of my favorites. Do you like drawing wings? And is it frustrating for you to draw the shapes and feathers right? No, I know how to draw the shapes on wings. I don't find it uh, uh, frustrating, and I do enjoy it. Birds were the first things I learned how to draw when I was a kid. First animal. There we go. I think three is a nice number. We'll get some grasses on here. Let me pull out. You may remember when I suggested uh, switching the roles like an elephant trying to stalk an unimpressed lion. Uh, yeah. but, I th but I think an elephant <laughs> swinging through the trees like a monkey would be funny too. I think you're right. So here, first of all, I want to get this ring out of the way first because I want to have a nice, a nice clear silhouette for it. When you're listening to music and drawing, does the type of music um, that you're listening to ever affect the emotions of the drawing? Uh, yeah. Oh, sure. I, I usually put on stuff that's really easy, like chill out, you know, really easy stuff to, to listen to. Like Seal, Kedmo. Or, or, yeah, or I listen to, you know, stuff of my era, like, you know, 70s music and... Uh, but good singer-songwriter music, too. I like that. Hi, Aaron. Uh, you talked about mind block in your last stream, but what if it was the other way around and you had too many ideas uh, to think of? How do you organize your ideas... Um, do you write them and figure out a time and day to draw them down on paper? Thank you. I never have too many ideas, so <laughs> whoever you are, good for you. Because <laughs> uh, you've got a problem that nobody has. But no, I, if, I, if I have, uh, if I've got a lot of ideas, I, yeah, I, I write them down. I get them down, get them out. Art of books are usually about the art of movies. For example, the art of Tangle or oh, the art of okay. Well, there's art of books uh, on artists as well. The yeah. art of this person or the art of that person. That's what I thought you meant. Do you own one of those? And uh, P.S. Thanks for those art book titles. Um, hold on. Let me get this. No, you can't get it. You got to answer now. Yeah, I've got I've got a lot of Disney art of books because I worked on the movies that I got the art of. Matter of fact, I'm in some of the art of books, so that how, that's kind of fun. Every time I see the um, the Illusions of Life book, I always yeah. think of that book as the art of Pinocchio because of the Pinocchio. Oh of yeah, being on the cover of it, and I always thought, man, the, the art of Pinocchio is so big. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, that's not the art of Pinocchio. Yeah. I remember seeing that growing up. Like, you've had that thing since I was born, right? I got it when I was in college. Yeah. So uh, before nice little either. eyeball. <laughs> How about a lion cub <laughs> seeing a giraffe for the first time after? It has seen an elephant and calling it a neck <laughs> That's awfully specific. Very specific. Did you say you were working on a book yourself? Um, is that anywhere close to being done? Um, it just, yeah, I mean, no, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we've got all the, um, we've got all the work, you know, it's all going to, it's just an art of Aaron Blaze book. Um, we just, uh, there we go, I'm trying to find, ah, I don't like how the, 
I gotta I wanna break that head out more. There, I'll just do that. I want a good silhouette on that head. Sorry if you answered it last class. Uh, I asked then had to run away to uh, work on a meeting. Uh, I have seen your post uh, on your Beauty and the Beast animation recently. Uh, may you talk about them for a bit? About your animation days of uh, Beauty, Beauty and Beast? the Beast? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, Beauty and the Beast was the first big... I mean, I worked on The Rescuers Down Under. That was my first feature. Before that, I'd worked on uh, Roller Coaster Rabbit, which was a a Roger Rabbit cartoon uh, short that went out with Dick Tracy. That was the first Disney project that I'd ever worked on. And um, hold on, sorry. What are you doing? I don't know whether to throw it that way. That looks too... But uh, So Beauty and the Beast, I, I, when I was an intern, when I was training to be an animator, I worked under, uh, I was trained by, uh, by Glenn Keane, who was the supervising animator of The Beast. And so when, when uh, I trained during uh, Oliver and Company and uh, The Little Mermaid. So when, um, uh, when it came time to do Beauty and the Beast, Glenn and I already knew each other and he was looking for somebody in the Florida studio, which is where I was working, that could animate the Beast as well with him. And uh, there was six of us all together that worked on the Beast. And uh, so I was one of the guys. And uh, so I was the they called I was called the Florida Beast guy. And I worked closely with Mark Hen, who was animating uh, Bell. Throw a few rings on the ground that he's missed. Yeah, was someone I was actually just start was just asking that. Yeah. You know, draw some mist rings on the ground. Yeah. So so he was animating Bell, and uh, and so uh, that's interesting. This is something I never knew. Uh, rhinos have the same kind of cheekbone as a as an elephant. Oh really? I'm just now noticing that. I've never really put that together. Huh. See, these are little discoveries you make along the way. Along the way. You're always learning something new every day. Yeah. And if you're not learning anything that day, then you're doing something wrong there, bud. I'm going to try dropping that eye down just a little bit. Because right now it's a little even in the spacing. Let's see if it's a little more... Would you say the rhino's annoyed of being used as a uh, um, ring hoop? Or would you say that he is happy? I th I'm, I'm thinking he's just kind of... Oh, well. Not really annoyed. It's just all right. Sort of like uh, if anybody wants to clap, now's the time to do it. <laughs> Eeyore. I think he's a good Eeyore. That was my best Eeyore. <laughs> there. I like getting, I like dropping that eye down just a little bit. It makes things a little less even. We'll throw up some grasses. Yeah, we got a nice little vignette now. She had like a um, extra ring on the on the second horn, kind of like a extra points. So oh yeah, one back here. Yeah. And so I said in that pose uh, slash composition, I would say the second horn on the rhino should give the meerkats extra points, wouldn't you say? There you go. Yeah, I like that idea. I just gave them a. <clears throat> An extra point. Did you enjoy being the director of your own movie, or working under the working under the director on specific characters more? Uh, I liked being the director. Once I got the hang of directing, I really got the bug for it. I love directing. It's one of my favorite things because I, I love being involved in every aspect of the film. I really, I especially like the music. And the, and the acting, I love, love that. You got your iced water? Oh, yeah. You oh, stay yeah. Thirsty, my friends. 
Stay thirsty, my friends. <laughs> Stay thirsty. Oh, I forgot to hit save. Oh, uh, control S. It is control S, right? Yeah. So I'm just going to knock this back just a touch, get some of this graphite off. Just I'm going to ink. I'm going to ink from the left to the right. To the left. To the left. To the left. To the window. To the wall. Now can I finish the rest? <laughs> Was it dirty? Yeah, one of those dirty club songs from back in the day. Back in the day. <laughs> back in the other day. I like this suggestion. This was really cool. Thomas Gonzalez uh, Jr. says, Not a question, but my favorite animated scene is from The Rescuers Down Under. It's where uh, Marahoot uh, is freed from being trapped under the net. And explodes. And, <laughs> and when she unfurls her wings, yeah. just left me in complete awe when I was a kid. I knew from then on I wanted to be an animator. Yeah, that was Glenn Keane once again. Glenn animated that, and it was unbelievable. Oh, he animated the that eagle? Marahute, yeah. He was Marahute. He was, yeah. He was the lead animator of Marahute. And um man, I remember flipping through those drawings when she explodes out like that. And uh it's just beautiful work. It was really cool, you know, as an animator getting to look at other you know animators work sort of you know like you know iconic like iconic scenes that people nowadays know really well I was there when they were animated and got to flip through them you know like Simba trying to wake up Mufasa um, I remember when Mark first finished that shot and went out to the into the central area there where we kept all of our cameras and he shot it and we all got together and watched it for the first time it was something else. We knew right then that was going to be a classic, a classic scene. Hi, Aaron. I found one of your dog drawings in one of your previous live streams. I was surprised to learn you own a toy poodle. For some reason, I envisioned you having two pet wolves. <laughs> yeah, that's normally what I would have. I inher we inherited, <laughs> we inherited the toy poodle. That's uh, Vedanta's. He's a very cool dog. His name is Max. Yeah, normally I wouldn't get a toy poodle, but I really like this guy. He's he's 13 years old. He's 13, super super cool dog. Hey, your other buddy dog is uh, Achilles. Yeah, and then we've got Achilles. And I used to have uh, an English bulldog. Her name was Violet. Yep. Still got the scar from her bite of my leg. <laughs> yeah. Well, she it was, didn't bite it was your, an accident. Yeah, I was gonna say she didn't bite your leg. Yeah. She kind of ran by. And well, it was a, it was a bite, but it was unintentional. Right. It was it was an accidental bite. But yeah, that was a that was a fun day. <laughs> yeah. Uh. Oh, Nick says we've crossed 2,000 followers on Twitch. Ooh. That's awesome. Wow, already? That's awesome. Have you ever tried... Shoot. Uh, can you move the rhino? Uh. So I just need to see that question. Uh, where is my arrow? There it is. Just move it over to the right. Or to the upper left. Upper right, I mean. You grab it right there. Right there. Grab it. Wait, just put it right up there. There you go. Have you ever tried uh, water soluble? Yeah. I'm assuming you're mean. What? Can you scroll down on that? Have you ever tried water soluble? Just yeah. Just use the no over here, right there. Now just yeah. Rot uh, water soluble graphite. No, I've never tried water soluble graphite. I've never heard of. Oh no, I have heard of water soluble graphite, but it was years ago. I'm just going to pull it down like this. Yeah, that's better. Thanks. 
There we go. There we go. So Harrison Ford is the voice of one of the dogs in The Secret Life of Pets 2. He's awesome. Huh. Yeah, the only person I remember, the only voice that I remember in the um, in the Life of Pets movies is Kevin Hart. That's all I can remember. Would there be a pile of unthrown uh, rings with the meerkats? Oh, that's a good idea. I'll do that. That's a good idea. Of all of them, I uh, can't see exactly where the suggestion is now, but someone's even suggesting um, the rhino chewing off one of the rings. Like the ring falls over and he's just chewing on like they're like it's he thinks it's a donut or something. That's a good idea. can't get the, uh, now that I've already done the ink, I can't get the, I can't get it to read. I won't be able to get it to read. Too late. I pronounce this tapir, tapir, tapir? Tapir? Tapir. So I was suggesting, uh, do a tapir reading poetry. The tapir looks like uh, Pablo Neruda. So it's perfect. I don't know who Pablo Neruda is. Hope I pronounced that right. N E R U D A? Neruda? I don't know. <laughs> this is what animals were doing while waiting for Simba to be born. <laughs> Mark Davies asks Regarding traditional animation, you use a slightly heavy duty paper. What is the make of paper you use? What do I need to search for to get it? Um, the paper I have right now, I got from my buddy Dom Carolla um, at Premise Entertainment. Um, they order it, and I can't remember. Uh, I can't remember the name of the company. I'll have to find out, and then I'll I'll let you guys know. Love the jumping scene in Spirit. Viewing a horse jump from an underside is hard. Yeah, Tom Cito, a friend uh, on Facebook once said they were they were sitting around trying to decide, I think I said this last week, trying to decide what the hardest thing to animate would be. They finally decided it would be a horse walking on all fours down a spiral staircase. <laughs> Thought that was pretty funny. Nice. <laughs> How about the leftmost meerkat uh, holding a ring, waiting for his turn? Oh, that's a great idea. Very good idea. I'll do that. <laughs> All right, come on, you're next. You could add another meerkat on the rhino's back holding a little scoreboard. <laughs> it's getting busy. Getting a little busy. It's getting a little busy. <laughs> Trying to keep that everything nice and clear. The silhouette's clear. Everything. I'm making breakfast now. Anyone want some? I already had lunch, Gabby. Thank you. I had succotash and quiche. And quiche? Yes, real men eat quiche. Mm. Well, unfortunately, I'm still a boy, so. <laughs> ah. <laughs> ah. What's your opinion on the 1996 live action 101 Dalmatians? Oh, I loved it. That's one with Glenn Close, right? Glenn Close played a. Uh, uh, Cruella de Vil? I think so. I haven't seen it. So Cruella long. de Vil. Cruel devil. Cruella de Vil. Cruella de Vil. 
That's all that I know of this <laughs> evil song. <laughs> I know it's getting a little busy, but someone else is suggesting. How about a rhino in the background tired out? Like, how can you be tired out from standing? How about no? How can you be tired from, from standing around with <laughs> ring, with rings getting in your uh, horn? When learning to draw an animal you don't know, how do you start... Uh, do you start with a skeleton, muscles, gesture, try to find uh, construction lines? I, ba I basically know the structure underneath any an mammal. You can you basically know. I mean, just I, what, what I do is I start looking at the, just the general shapes. You know, what's the angle of the head to shoulders? Like with this rhino, I don't draw a lot of rhinos. So I just needed to see for the reference. Oh, that's right. I forgot. There's their shoulder blades and hump because their head is so heavy they need really big vertebrae attachments for the for the trapezius muscle for the head to hang the way that it does and so that makes their shoulder hump really huge and so you know it's just things like that once I understand that then I go okay now I know what to do and then I look at general head shape um, you know just the general shapes because then I, I, I can understand how everything goes after that. Uh, or I was out of question, except for one that's for me. <laughs> YouTube question, a referee meerkat somewhere. <laughs> Dustin, who is your Disney crush or any cartoon crush? Huh. Never really thought of that. I would probably say... Merida. Oh, yeah. I'm brave. I like a strong Scottish woman. <laughs> Especially a redhead. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I liked her. Uh, I like her personality. Yeah, I'll say she's my crush. If only she were real. <laughs> there we go. I just gotta darken in this back leg back here. It's okay. Nick says Emma Stone is playing Cruella DeVille in a new Disney live action movie. Emma Stone? Huh? But she's so sweet. Emma Stone? Huh. Talk about good looking redheads, huh? Right. Yeah, I can't see her as Cruella DeVille. But then again, there are a couple of people I couldn't see as specific characters, and they ended up rocking them. Uh, YouTube question. Is it possible to paint over ink with watercolor, or is there also water-based ink? No, that's why I, I buy I buy waterproof ink, because I like to do the drawing first, and then you can do watercolor right over the top. Yes. Uh, Nick says, Selena used to be in love with Aquaman from Super Friends. <laughs> <laughs> I heard that he talks to fish. He can talk to the fishes. <laughs> <laughs> is it possible to make an animal character who is designed to not have an eyebrow hair hairline look expressive? Yeah, you can do it. Usually you do it with color separation, which still comes out basically like an eyebrow. 
Will studying different mediums for art, like painting, etc., help improve your drawing ability? I think it does. Nothing's going to improve your drawing ability than drawing. You got to be able to draw, and you know you got to do it. You got to practice at it. So there's our little rhino character. And so what I've done is I've taken you know the anatomy that I know, uh, that I've seen in the reference, and I exaggerate it. You know they have a very long curve in the way that their forearms come down, and I wanted to really push that. You know here's where the elbow, where this fold is. The elbow is back here, and the shoulders up here. The shoulder blade is actually right in this area. All of this. Um, if you could see their, their, their spinal column, the bones of their spine, they have big vertebrae that come up like this, and the trapezius muscle, which comes off of the, the scapula, connects to that, and that's what holds up this big, massive head. That muscle, that trapezius muscle, contracts, and it holds up this big, giant head. So the point I'm making is even if you're doing cartoon characters, it's good to understand... You know, you really want to understand that, that anatomy underneath as well as you can in order for it to be believable. You want that believability in your characters. You draw a fawn with a group of butterflies as a crown. Hmm. That's a really beautiful idea. A fawn? Yeah. With a group of butterflies as a crown. Oh, I think that's beautiful. Man, I'm hungry for donuts now. <laughs> Why is that? Because I'm drawing a whole bunch of donuts. It looks like on the on the ground. Hey, bud. <laughs> Achilles is here. Aaron Blaze plus Guillermo del Toro equals epic win. We were talking the other day about people we've seen and uh, tall, tall actors that, you know, because everyone talks about the actors that are short, you know, like Tom Cruise and, and, uh, um, the end of Kurt Russell, Kurt yeah. So we were talking about, I had seen, uh, I went to an Oscar lunch when we were nominated for an Oscar for Brother Bear, and I was standing in line behind Tim Robbins and Benicio Del Toro. And those, I'm 5'8", I'm or not 5'8", five 5'9", five and, uh, and these guys are like 6'5", or 6'6", six six. they were huge. They towered over me. They don't seem that tall on, on TV or on the movies, but they are, man, they are big guys. Are you messing with your camera again? I was going to take a picture. <laughs> <laughs> I'm keeping an eye on the comments. I'm just giving you a hard time. <laughs> Is it okay if I take a quick picture? Yeah, take a picture. Right. I was just worried I was going I was going to bother you with the sound. No. Are you chewing gum? <laughs> Are you chewing gum? <laughs> Sideways. Love that movie. <laughs> Are you wearing your seatbelt? So I just keep working that this one area to get it a little darker. Did you just drop one? I just dropped one. It looked one. like you leaned forward and lifted your leg. Oh, it's just readjusting. Oh. You know, so I can go... <laughs> <laughs> So I'm just getting a little shadow area under here. Nick says horses play horseshoes would be fun. <laughs> That's actually a great idea. I like that. <laughs> All right, so we've got our rhino. Uh, Simon suggests, hi, Aaron. How about a duck and a beaver confused at seeing a, a platypus? That is awesome. What was it again? How about a duck and a beaver that's confused by a platypus? <laughs> Yeah, you need to draw that. I think you can make it even clearer by just by dropping the beaver and just have the ducks because it's, you know, the platypus is what looks like the ducks. Might be, it might be a clearer comment. There we go. 
Is there a place to post uh, our finished pieces after we follow along with you? It would be fun to compare and learn from uh, from other viewers as well. Not yet, but we're gonna we're talking about doing something like that. <laughs> they were just uh, I always forget how tall Tim Robbins is. <laughs> Tall. Well, compared to Gabby, everybody's tall. Yeah, true. <laughs> no offense, Gabby. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. I'm joining way too late, so you've probably answered this before. Um, but did you hear about the Amazon rainforest fire going on? And yes. Do you think you'll make a drawing inspired by it, or have you done one already? No, I haven't done one yet, but I will be doing one. And it's a, it's not just one fire; it's a lot of fires. Zoom in a little bit. Just a little bit. There's our little rhino. <laughs> like, looks like you scored again. So here, it's you know, it's a, you can see how big my hand is compared to the drawing. So this is just a little drawing. I want to make sure that every line I put in. I'm putting it in in the right place. <laughs> so, uh, somebody recommends a uh, group of baby hippos playing hungry, hungry hippo hippos. <laughs> Oh, there could be numbers on the horns to show what amount of points they get. Like little scratch notches on the horns. Yeah, could do that. You could do that. Yeah, yeah, okay. Hey, do you have any tips for drawing animals with black fur like tapers or pandas? Yeah, I mean, you you got to you just got to get in there with a lot of ink. Um, I'm not trying to be funny. You really do have to... Um, you just got to... Uh, it's about looking at value changes. So, you know, focus on the areas that are light, and then everything else is going to be really dark. Have you ever drawn a Marwari horse? No. Is that how you pronounce it? Marwari? I don't know. They are one of my favorite breed of horses. I love their unique ears. Would love to see you draw one. Okay. I got to look it up. I don't know what that is. Mackenzie, do the thing. <laughs> Or Nick, if you can find find that out, Nick. Marwari spelled M A R W A R I. Uh, could you do some drawing with the Bimoji brush pens you showed in the tour video? Yes, I won't be doing that on this, but I'll do that in the future. I mean, I did it with the with the this. The spots on this were all done with the Bimoji pen. So there's that. I remember uh, watching someone that worked at for Disney telling us that when he asked his teacher if he could listen to music while working, the teacher got really mad. <laughs> I don't know what that's all about. <laughs> How do you feel about that? You listen to the music. Oh, uh, yeah, baby, music. listen to the music. As the Doobie Brothers once said. <laughs> I'm all for it, man. I love listening to music when I when I work. Listen to music is the best. It's the bomb. It's the bomb. All right. Little meerkat. I know this is an odd question, but... Um, but yeah. I'll ask it anyway. 
you have any tips on drawing frostbite on arms and feet of uh, furred critters? Um, this undead deer thing I was commissioned to draw has frostbitten hands and hooved feet. Frostbitten? Frost or bitten. frost covered? Frostbitten. Like, like. If it's frost covered, just look at bison and look at, you know, winter bison in Yellowstone. Pull that up on, on, uh, on Google. Because that's, they're just, they're, you know, one of the great things, one of the ways you can tell an animal has really effective warmth holding fur is if that snow that falls on them doesn't melt. Because if it doesn't melt, that means that there's no body heat escaping. And so a lot of times you'll see bison and things like that in, in Yellowstone that um, they're just covered in snow and frost and everything else because there's no body heat escaping out of that fur. They're being completely kept nice and warm. I was just drawing Dude. some grass. <laughs> so I was saying, do an elephant uh, painting humans in the wild. <laughs> Actually, that'll be that'll be interesting. An elephant doing the uh, cave paintings and not man. Yeah. All right, next guy. Here we go. Would love to see your dad draw a Percheron. Nick says, "I know some animation people think that listening to music is bad. I think uh, Richard Williams was against it in his book." Now, now listen, Richard Williams, he probably was, but Richard Williams, or at least as far as what I know, you can't listen to music while you're trying to figure out your dialogue. It, does, it occupies the same part of your brain, and you just can't physically do it. And, uh, or at least I know I can't. It, it, just, it occupies the same part of your brain, and you can't concentrate. Now, so when I was, when I'm, figure, I'm actually sitting down to figure out what I'm going to do in a shot, I can't, I can't, I, it's not even do I want to listen to music. I can't listen to music. So after I figure out what I'm going to do in the shot, and once I get the keys drawn, because the keys, once again, figuring those out, they occupy the same part of your brain as well. And so I have to just sit and focus completely in silence and do it then. But then once everything's figured out, then... I can sit down and crank my music like I do, and um, and like if I'm in the tie down stage or if I'm doing in betweens, no problem. And I and I listen to music blaring, loud, and it's awesome. So it really depends on the stage that you're at, as far as whether I'm listening to music or not. It's sort of like this. I mean, I'm sitting here. I'm sitting here, and this. A lot of people have a hard time doing this, but I've practiced at it. I'm sitting here drawing. I'm doing a drawing completely from scratch out of my head with animals that I don't usually draw, and I'm sitting here relating stories and talking to you at the same time. That's not super easy to do, and sometimes you'll see me kind of trail off and stop talking because <laughs> because I. If I, especially if I'm struggling with something, it occupies the same part of your brain. And so I can't focus on something if I'm struggling with it and talk at the same time. It becomes nearly impossible for me. There's, al there's also nothing trickier than listening to music, trying to draw, and trying to talk all at the same time. Yeah, forget it. <laughs> Do you ever, like, if you're listening to music in your car and you're trying to figure out a thing, something on a map, or no one uses maps anymore, you're trying to figure out something like directions. On your GPS. Or yeah. Whatever. What do you do? You sit and you turn your radio down? Yep. Yeah. I do that. Yeah. And it, it doesn't make any sense. But people do it. But it somehow uh, 
like for me it, it clears my mind when when I turn it down like it makes me focus more on the directions you know like but it's the same kind of idea yeah Nick says a real coyote chasing a real roadrunner <laughs> that's a great <laughs> idea can also do a wolf looking at a pug like what the hell happened yeah <laughs> that's a funny idea Aaron have you heard about Ecosia Ecosia I don't know it's no. a search engine that plants uh, trees a small company from Germany Never heard of it. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right. Eco Ecosia? Ecosia? But it definitely has something to do with ecology. And yeah. E C O S I A. E C O. I was going to say Ecosia. Ecosia? Ecosia? Somebody comments about the music in the car. Turn down the volume, I can't see. Wait a minute, listen, listen. You, you smell that? <laughs> I have a hard time processing uh, words in my head if I'm listening to music. I've had the same deal, especially. Well, that's the same thing. You can't process them because you you're having a hard time thinking because it's it's occupying the same part of your brain. That's what happens with animation. It's the same thing. Yeah. I mean, if it's something that has to do with like movement or uh, or eye coordination, like uh, like a video game, I can listen to music there. But if I'm like reading a book. I have to be very specific on what kind of music I listen to. Like, I can't listen to anything that has lyrics in them. Yeah. Because otherwise, their words and my words will mix up and be like, I yeah, can't read. I, I can't read books. <laughs> yeah, no, that's a good point. I can't read at all and uh, and listen to music. Yeah. Now, it's funny because um, I, can't, I can't listen to books on tape at all, ever, when I'm doing art or animation. Really? No, because it's not that it messes up my art. I don't hear what's going on in the... So if, for some reason, the music just sits in the background for me. But if I'm listening to a book on tape, it just becomes noise, and I'll listen to it for half an hour and not remember anything that he said. Because mm. I'm so... I don't know if it's just because I'm engrossed in what I'm doing. But yeah, it just doesn't it doesn't click. Or well, it just like turns you into autopilot? Yeah, I'm on autopilot when I'm working. Nick just put up, listen, you smell something? <laughs> smell something? Ghostbusters. <laughs> Don't hit me in the face, I need it for radio! <laughs> <laughs> what was that from? I, th uh, I think it was on like a TV show or movie way back when, but um, the most recent for me is from a... Um, uh, God, what do they call it? Um, it was basically somebody took an anime uh, show and redubbed it in a more comedic tone. Oh, gotcha. And uh, there's one point where there's a big event going on in a, uh, um, at like a basketball court or something. Basketball. Um, arena. That's what it was. A giant arena. And, um, Something goes wrong and all hell breaks loose and people get into the radio booth. <laughs> like, they're in the booth! <laughs> Don't have me in the pa face! I need it for radio! Alright, so there's our three mirror cats. <laughs> we got them drawn. That feels pretty good. There's our rhino that they're throwing the ring onto. I like that. I like the staging overall. That all feels pretty good. Now... I just want to get a few environmental things done. I made the mistake of playing the Harry Potter soundtrack and audiobook at the same time. My brain was exhausted in a matter of minutes. 
the brain can only handle so much audio. What would be even worse would be not only if you're play, listening to the soundtrack and listening to the audiobook, but also if you're playing either one of the old Harry Potter games or if you're drawing like a Harry Potter fan art. Basically anything Harry Potter themed. Yeah. That would be the, the trifecta of wearing your brain out in a matter of minutes. <laughs> Just drawing grasses, just random grasses, giving it a little bit of an environmental feel. I can listen to audiobooks and draw, but if I was animating someone talking, or if I was writing like a comic and planning out characters conversing, I would inadvertently tune out the audiobook book. That's exactly Same. right, exactly. Same deal with TV shows or movies. Yeah, I had this weird thing where uh, I would, when I was working at the three at the three D uh, studio in uh, uh -huh. California and Canada, um, or even at Digital Domain, like I would, if I listened to music, it would make me tired over time. But putting a TV show or putting a movie in the background while working, it kept me. It kept me alert and awake. Oh, that's weird. Sorry, comment. I like how the rhino's legs uh, look like he has weight. That's the idea. You want to, you want to, you want that to feel like that's he's heavy. And so you, you can make things, if you make them, if you buckle them in the right areas, first of all, that's how they're built. I'm just exaggerating it. And they he, buckle, they buckle just because of that, they, for that weight. He's a heavy son of a gun. Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. There. So you can see, I don't get really detailed with it. But just adding a little bit of grass in here gives it a nice feel. I'm being invited by ASEC. Is that how A I E S E C? ASEC? ASEC? Uh, to be a volunteer in any part of the world. I've always wanted to go to Africa, but of course I'm concerned about the safety. Uh, when you were in Africa, did you go by yourself or with the help of an agency or something like that? Uh, I've done it both ways. And um, there's really, uh, it depends on where you go. Um, there's really not nothing to be afraid of. You don't do, you know, it's like any, anywhere else. I mean. With everything here in the United States, I mean, the United States is more dangerous than a lot of places around the world. And so it just depends. A lot of people get afraid of a place because they don't know it, not realizing that the, the place that they're from is probably just as dangerous, if not more. So it, it's, a, you know, just exercise common sense. Um, you know, you don't go into unfamiliar areas at night by yourself and, you know, that sort of thing. But I was in... I was in Nairobi right after the bombing happened in 1998 when the embassy got bombed and they, you know, they were blaming Americans for it and um, and they, you know, they told us don't go out into the city and I went out anyway and I never had any problems with anybody. But, you know, the biggest thing I've discovered traveling the world is People are people, no matter where you are, and you know it's. There's a lot of bad people out there, and there's a lot of good people out there. But I don't think we're defined by. It's not defined by what country you're from. Most of the time. What are you? What are you most proud of in your career? 
Oh, I don't know. I think it's more more about just sticking to it through thick and thin, the, the, pers the persistence of no matter what, you know, sticking with it and continuing, you know, wanting to create. And, you know, because I've, my career, my career completely changed, you know, at the age of 45. I started over completely. I left animation altogether and started this, you know, what we're doing now. And, um, uh, and I'm proud of that. You know, it's, it's the, it's the having stuck with it and, and, uh, and seen, you know, we saw a need, I think in the, in the market for what we're doing right now. And we decided to do it, Nick and I, and we've done it through thick and thin and yes, and I'm, I'm happy about that. All right. So there is our, whoops. There's our guy, and I need to hit it with some marker and some white jelly roll. Jelly roll. Nick says, I can listen to audiobooks while doing visual work like graphics illustration, but not while coding. That's interesting. But I can't have anything visual like a movie or, TV or, movie or TV in the background, though, because I always stop what I'm doing and get sucked <laughs> into watching. I do the same thing. Yeah, that's why I can't do it. <laughs> what? Uh, we were just talking about cultures and how people are the same. Oh. And if there's two things I can't stand are people that are intolerant of other people's, people's cultures, cultures and, and the, the Dutch. Dutch. <laughs> <laughs> Would you That's like a smoke and a pancake? <laughs> oh, that never gets old. For those of you that don't know the reference, we are not slamming the Dutch. It was a joke. It's a, it's a line from an Austin Powers movie. Austin Powers gold member. I read the never-ending story while listening to the original soundtrack of The Lion King. Losing uh, Atreyu in the swamps of sadness was really heavy while hearing the death of Mufasa in the back. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> That's pretty that's pretty hardcore. <laughs> Draw a hunt party of lionesses standing still as a cheetah runs around them on top speed. <laughs> Why would he run around them? Showing them up. Oh yeah, good point. Because he can. <laughs> you draw lion, lion cubs riding on giraffe feet uh, while it walks like kids do. Oh, I love that idea. <laughs> but do it with a whole bunch of little animals. How does it feel knowing that you directed a movie that is now considered by many to be one of the greats. Uh, where did you come up with Brother Bear? Oh, that was years of development, writing, and I've always been a fan of Native American myths and legends and folklore, and so that was my inspiration, and then we really just started talking about what inspires us, and what kind of movie or story do we want to tell, and it, it evolved over time. It was definitely a process. No gray uh, pen on this one? Probably, I might put a little bit. I'm not sure yet. The ring that's in the air, do you think it's gonna hit its mark? Don't know. I wanted to make it. I wanted to make it close enough, and put it in a in a position that it could twist and twirl around. But I also want to make it white so you see it. Hmm. There you go. There Abraham you go. asks, "Hi, I've Hi. gone through your character design tutorial and I've signed up for the online class. I think it will be great to see even more examples of the process. What kind of character will it be? 
Well, I'm not sure yet. I do a thing where I, t I talk about Buck, uh, the character, the, the dog from the Call of the Wild, but I might do something new. How many pens have you gone through so far on these 40 plus drawings? Uh, I have gone through three of the tool pens. This is my third tool pen, and I've gone through three jelly roll pens. That's not bad. No, it's not bad at all. Sorry if, our, if someone already asked, but why the switch to traditional lately? I loved all your work, uh, but just curious. Uh, love to see you doing so much. I'm on a roll of 190 plus days of a drawing a day. <laughs> oh, that's great. Um, I just, I wanted something tangible that people could buy. There's been a, uh, we just recently did a, uh, a workshop here in Orlando and having my, uh, original art there was really popular and um, so I just decided to do some more of it so that's what I'm doing and plus I, I just I like having something tangible you know digital art is great don't get me wrong but I like having a physical piece of art you know in my hand When making Brother Bear, what temporary music tracks did you use during the stor storyboarding? Oh man, there's a lot. I don't know. Um, I'd have to ask our editor on that because he has a whole library of temp music that he would use. I know we did. We pulled from Rescuers, uh, Rescuers Down Under. I know we did that. But we pulled from some live action films as well. I always liked the burial scene in Brother Bear. Is that an accurate depiction of their bur burial rituals or pure fantasy? That we made that up. We, you know, one of the reasons we set the time period so far back during the last Ice Age is that we wanted to be able to have a little bit of leeway in creating the culture as well. And so the Great Spirit, and I'm sure there was some similarities, um, but you know the Great Spirits were such a big part of the story. So the idea of sending Sitka's spirit up into the sky through the fire, the funeral pyre, um, that to me felt, it felt believable, first of all. Um, I didn't darken in the other ear. Um, but it, it, it fit with the story that we were trying to tell. And so that's why we did it. And I wanted to, I wanted to feel spiritual and, um, you know, Phil got in there and wrote the music and really did a good job getting that sense of spirituality as well. How about a bug on top of the head of some of the meerkats? Like they're so focused on the game, their food ain't <laughs> ain't scared of them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll do. I'll try that another time. I've already got them all linked in. I don't want to take any fo focus away from the main action. Hey, Mama. Hey. Hey, is here. We're about we're about fifteen minutes from finishing. Are we getting close to having to get the girls? Gotcha. What time is it? It's three thirty one. Three thirty one. Yes, you is. Well, that's a perfect time to finish up right here. We got to go get our uh, Vedanta's daughters from school, but there's our. I loved doing this as a. Uh, this was really fun doing this as a, uh, as a request. So whoever came up with the. 
Meerkat's throwing rings on the rhino's horn. Thank you for that idea. Here it is. It was a blast. And like I said, this is going to be available for sale at the uh, at the light box event. And uh, I'd love to see you guys there. So here we go. There. There we go. There, there it is. There she blows. And that is the way the cookie crumbles. Oh, my. There we go. So uh, there we go. I mean, uh, let me sign it. Yeah. 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 That's good, yeah. yeah. So this was fun. We'll zoom in on it a little bit so you can get some of the detail. So there's our rhino. There's some of the rings on the ground and he's got rings on his horns. We got a ring up in the air. Meerkats playing. <laughs> the grass. Very cool. That was a lot of fun. Got a YouTube question. Are you familiar with the book Wolf Brother by Michael Paver? Relationship between an orphaned wolf and the boy in ancient Europe. Amazing mythology connection. Um, if, if it's... Uh, I wonder if it's the same as the one that just came out about the boy in uh, during the Ice Age befriends a wolf. Um, I'm not familiar with the book. Um, have I done any uh, YouTube question? Have you done any drawings of animals hunting, like a pride of lions taking down a buffalo? I haven't done that, um, but uh, I, it sounds like I should. Uh, I like to do animals in action, so uh, definitely I'll look into it. But I, I need to get going. I need to go to. <laughs> I need to go to pick up the girls. And you gotta go. You gotta go. I gotta go. But it was a lot of fun today, you guys. I really appreciate it. Um, thanks for the suggestions. We're going to keep doing this. I'm going to be drawing uh, next week as well. So here's our, here are our three. These are the drawings I've done today. This elephant underwater. And then we have our leopard sketch. And then our fun meerkats playing ring toss on a hip, on a rhino. That's fun. So remember, these are going to be for Lightbox, September 6th through the 8th. Dustin, that's your cue. Lightbox. September 6th through the 8th, we're going to be at Lightbox in Pasadena, California. And uh, I'm going to be at my booth in booth 203. And uh, I'll be there, or I will be um, giving Square. lectures. <laughs> so, And I'm also going to be looking at doing a meetup at the LA Zoo to do some animal drawings. So hopefully we'll be able to do that. Also, our character design course that we're going to be live September, September 28th. Go to uh, creatureartteacher.com backslash live and you can get tickets to attend that. It's going to be a six hour course uh, and I cover everything that I know about character design and we're going to do that September 28th starting at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So hopefully uh, that time will fit with your schedule and you can come in and join us. Also, Patreon. We've got a Patreon page going and uh, and we take donations and you know in return for a dollar you're getting three to four images that you can download for five bucks a month you can get those images and the Photoshop files and you can break down every layer and see how I've put them together which is really helpful and for a ten dollar donation you're going to be able to get a monthly stream where I come on live and talk to you guys and it's a much smaller audience which should be kind of cool because I'll be able to look at portfolios possibly and uh, critique work and we can talk about a lot of things under the sun so uh, go to patreon.com back or uh, uh, slash Aaron blaze art and uh, you can help us out there and it really you know every little bit helps because it enables us to take the time to make more of these videos and do more streaming and everything else so please help us out with that and uh, and remember also we've got a brand new or not brand new but we've got a back to school sale happening and so for all you teachers and students out there uh, right now you can get 50% off of our membership 
uh, for, to CreatureArtTeacher.com. And remember, when you become a member, you have access to everything we have on the site. And it's not just for streaming. You can download it. You can keep it. It's yours forever. So it's a really good deal. Another thing, too, is if you become a member, uh, we have a partnership with TV Paint where you can get a huge percentage off. I think it's 100 bucks, 100 bucks off the, the price of TV Paint. So that's a big deal, too, or pretty close to it. I can't remember exactly the specific amount, but it's uh, it's a really great deal. Uh, so anyway, that's it. Um, I hope you guys had a great uh, time today. I really enjoyed drawing. I love the suggestions. Uh, it was a lot of fun. We'll do some more of it next week. We're going to continue traditional drawing like this. And uh, go out there, put some beauty back in the world. I hope you guys have a great, great weekend. Use it to do something positive. Do something great. And uh, like I said, make someone else's life better. So with that, I will see you guys next Tuesday and have a great weekend. Dustin? All right, that is it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Glad you guys enjoyed this stream. Hope you guys enjoy our future stream on Tuesday as well. And until next time, Cowboy Bebop. See you guys.